What's up, everybody? It's No Joke Cow. We're coming at you live yet again from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, in my stinky, dirty, fucking sweaty ass bedroom. Uh, but life is good. Life is good. I'm about to make some some noodles and some eggs and tomatoes and shit. Um, yeah, I got a, I got a very interesting email from this man named Daniel. I'm not gonna say your last name, Daniel. Don't worry. But basically, the first half was base uh, pretty much his life story. Um, and you know. This guy has, this guy's, wow, he's he, he's been through some shit. You know, Daniel, if you're watching, which I'm sure you are, man. Dude, wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. You've, you, you've had quite a life on you so far. Um, and that's actually pretty amazing. Uh, he said he's, he, he's from Portland, Oregon. And Daniel, uh, this probably ain't really, a, like, it's not a big deal to you. But I used to live in Portland myself. Um, I lived there for, like, six months. And while I was living there at first, I was a truck driver, just like you, man. I drove for uh, Warner Enterprises and I drove for CR England. Uh, I never drove for Swift, but I saw them all the time. They're based out of what, Phoenix, Arizona, right? Swift? But yeah, I lived in North Portland, uh, right there by St. John's uh, off of um, Willamette, off of Willamette Boulevard by, uh, by like Lombard uh, Street and Willamette, like in between there. Anyways. Yeah, man, so Portland's a good town. Portland's a good town. Uh, at least I thought so. Um, but anyways, yeah, I'm not going to read his life story because I think that's personal to him. I think he just wanted to talk to me about that. But I am going to answer some of his questions and answer other people's questions as well. So let me let me see if I can pick them out here. Uh, it's a pretty big email. So number one was uh, one question, what TEFL online course should I do? There's a 60 hour and a 120 hour. Is there a difference they care about in Cambodia? Um, yeah, I mean, typically you just want to go for the 120. I mean, it just looks better. You know, you didn't bullshit and go, you didn't half ass it. But as far as Teffels go, man, you know, I, I, I got mine. I got my Teffel um, online as well, and like I, t I took it so seriously. Like I was so serious about it. Like I had to have it. I was so dedicated to finishing it, and I had all these job interviews, and not one, not one of the school directors asked to see my Teffel. Not one of them. Like it was on my resume, but he never asked for proof. He just saw it. All they saw was they saw a foreigner. Uh, with that, that was a native speaker. I was, you know, clean cut, well dressed, well spoken. I had a good looking resume. Oh yeah, and like I said, I'm a native speaker, and that's and that's really what they look for. Um, is a native or, or they they look for native speakers. Um, so I fucked that up, didn't I? Jesus. Um, <laughs> but in terms of what company you should go through, I went through this company called ITTT. I forgot what it stood for, but it's like ITTT online TEFL course, whatever bullshit. It was like 250 bucks, I think. Another one is Love TEFL, for those of you who are watching. Uh, and dude, there's like countless other TEFL programs. Just look, if you're going to get your TEFL, don't do it at International TEFL Academy. Now, they have an online program and it's like 1300 fucking dollars. And then their in-class program is like... Depending on where you go, it, it, it can be anywhere from like $1,700 to $2,500. It's a waste of fucking money. Don't do it, guys. Um, unless unless you're not a native speaker, you might, you're just better off just getting the shitty online. And here in Cambodia, they're not going to fucking ask you for it. Now, some other countries will. Like, I know that Mexico will, will, will want you to have a TEFL, but Cambodia says they do. Even some schools say you have to have a college degree. It's bullshit. The reason they put that on their website, the school, the okay, the reason the schools put that on their websites is because the parents of the students want to see that they only hire teachers with a TEFL with a bachelor's because the schools in Cambodia are not schools. They are they are they are companies. They are businesses uh, that the parents pay. Uh, to live in the uh, to live in the fucking delusion that their children are really learning something. These schools are nothing more than businesses. And my school director even told me that. He's like, look, we just want the parents to pay us. 
All right. If they don't pay us, then we can't pay you. That 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 that's what he told me. Now that that's Cambodia for you, dude. So if you're stressing out about, oh my God, I have to have a degree, I have to have all this all this experience. No, the parents they just want to see a foreigner with a with a college degree, whether or not you have one, teaching their fucking kids. So I hope I answered your question, guys. Uh, if you have any more questions about like teaching, like what it's actually like to teach here, just shoot me an email, no joke striking at Gmail. I'll be happy to make a video on it. It's really no big deal. Uh, next one is, I uh, really love to come Cambodia to teach English. Uh, nice. <laughs> uh, I like to find myself again with an ayahuasca retreat, 100%. Ayahuasca, just from like, just from like what I read in your email, dude. Ayahuasca would be amazing, not just for you, uh, uh, Daniel, but for anybody. Um, blah blah blah. Your YouTube channel is fucking awesome. Goddamn right it is. Uh, so inspiring. Blah blah blah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, he he said he has five thousand uh, dollars. Five thousand dollars, sir. You are rich as fuck in Cambodia. So don't stress out about money. Um, and he asked me, he said uh, that he wants to live in an area of Phnom Penh that aren't full of tourists or expats or, you know, white people or just whatever. And, dude, I'm the same way. First of all, number one, it's going to be way more expensive just because if there's more foreigners, it's going to be more expensive restaurants, more expensive coffee shops, blah, 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 you name it. It's, it's, it's like that in any country, I'm sure. Um, now the part of town I live in is called Tutumpong, Tutumpong, uh, that's three words, um, it's kind of a bigger area of town and it, it does have a lot of expats in it on the southern end of it, but where I live, I live on the far northern end of Tutumpong and it, really not many foreigners at all, dude, like when I walk around, I'm literally, I mean, aside from my roommates cause they're, cause they're white, uh, but aside from us, like, and a couple other neighbors here, and the whole area, it's like all Khmer, it's all Cambodian people, which I love. So like when I go to the market here, everybody speaks Khmer. So I get to work on my Khmer, um, and it's great, man. So if basically, if, if you want to stay away from all the expats and Badongs, as they call them, uh, that's like, Badong is like, like white person. Um, it means French, but they say that for white people. Then I would stay away from the riverside. I would stay away from the Russian market area, which is like southern Tutumpong, I'd, I'd stay away from there, um, and pretty much anywhere else, you know, really, um, plus, plus if you stay away from that, it's going to be cheaper food, cheaper housing, uh, it's going to be more authentic, you know, all that crap, so, uh, you know, but yeah, really, most of Phnom Penh is, like, you're, like, you're not going to have a problem, oh yeah, and stay away from, like, Street 51, uh, like, like you could check out a map on, and, and all that of where it is or, or, or do some research or if you want, I could do a video on it, but it's basically just bars and clubs for tourists and there's a shitload of tourists around there and uh, expats and I, I don't care to really go there at all, to be honest. So, uh, and he was saying that, uh, should, should I mention my, my military, uh, my, my military experience on my resume? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, why, 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 why wouldn't you? Uh, special forces, dude. That be be proud of that shit. Be fucking proud of that, dude. You're 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 an American. Uh, they'll, they'll they'll probably see you as a fucking hero, anyways. Um, you're a native speaker. I'm sure you're a fairly well spoken guy. I mean, I haven't talked to you in person, but just from the way you type, it seems like you're pretty well spoken, dude. Um, yeah, absolutely. Plus, it shows that you have leadership. It shows that you, you know, can adapt to new situations, that, that you're pretty fucking tough and blah, 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 uh, especially with the medical stuff. Um, and as far as experience goes, like your experience level, dude, when I came here, I had zero, zero experience and I got a job making 10 bucks an hour first thing and 10 bucks an hour here in Cambodia. I was making a thousand a month, dude, 10 bucks an hour here in Cambodia is really fucking good uh so don't worry about experience don't worry about putting your military stay um you know it's it's just just make a resume dude and and just say that uh just tell them about yourself man just just be honest dude it's it's really don't 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 overthink it and obviously when you go in for the job interview just dress well 
you know, dr dress like, uh, dress somewhat formal, like wear a pair of slacks, you know, shirt tucked in. If you got tattoos, cover up your tattoos. Don't be a dumbass, you know, just, just go in there and fucking look sharp, you know. Dude, <laughs> don't, don't, don't stress. Cause, cause I did, I did. And when I came here, I saw like, how not serious any of this shit is. Like, I don't even take my job that seriously, to be honest. Uh, just because I know, like, who I'm working for. So, anything else? Um, yeah, in terms of the way you teach, I mean, he was asking, like, the teaching style. Yeah, the, most schools do have a curriculum, but do you need to really follow it? Not really. Just as long as... Just as long as you're doing something in the class, like me personally, I do a little bit of book work and then we play games, but the games improve their English. So like I'll play Hangman or I'll play like like Word Unscramble. Uh, we'll do charades and shit like that. You know, it's just it's fun for the kids. It's 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 fun for me to be honest. And it and it does improve their English. And then I give them homework from the books. Dude, it's so fucking easy, dude. It's so easy. Uh, don't don't overthink this, man. Or I anybody watching? Um, and he was saying that uh, I should I should make a video where where it's called Oracle Howard's Guide to Retards That Need Help Finding Schools. Well, that's not a bad idea, man. Um, I might I might have to do that, but I don't know if I really feel like going around town and like showing you guys all the schools. To be quite honest. Um, when you when you come here, there are schools fucking everywhere, dude. They're everywhere, so you're not gonna have an issue finding a school. If you have Google Maps while you're here, it has all the schools on there, dude. So I'm telling you, man, getting a job here is fucking cake. Um, just you gotta put a little effort in. You gotta make CVs and stuff, and you gotta like actually go and hand them out, and you know. Um, and he also had another one, one last question. When is a good time to start because of the school term? And that, that's actually a good question. Um, yeah, a lot of schools sometimes, if it's the middle of the term, they only have part-time positions open. Uh, so you might only be able to work part-time and make like, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month, unfortunately. So usually the school terms start here, I think in... They, they usually end around uh, fall time and summer time, just kind of like back in the States or maybe even Europe too. Um, you, you, you can do some more research on that. But uh, even so, dude, if you're coming out here with $5,000, you, you could afford to just go on vacation for like a couple months. <laughs> Seriously, like a couple months easily and still have... A couple, like a few thousand left over, dude. So I would suggest that for you, Daniel. Come here to Cambodia, travel around for a while, go everywhere, dude. Go to Angkor Wat, go to fucking Battambang, go to Mandalkiri and see the waterfalls. Go, go to K K Kite, go to fucking Vietnam, go to Laos. I mean, well, fuck it, dude. You have all kinds of money. It sounds like you've had a real hard life, dude. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's your time to let loose and enjoy and fucking travel and just chill the fuck out in a beautiful country, a beautiful part of the world. Enjoy the fruits of life here in Southeast Asia, man. Um, I haven't looked back since. I have no fucking desire to go back to Virginia where I'm from. So anyways, dude, I hope, I hope I answered your questions as always, Daniel or anybody watching, just fucking email me if you have any questions don't don't think that you're bugging me or you're bothering me because you're not i love doing this shit i said in my other video i love to do this crap i liked helping people you don't have to fucking pay me you know just the fact that you guys take an interest in what what the like what i'm putting out there the fact that you take an interest in it means the world to me uh it makes me very happy so i i mean that sincerely guys anyways no joke striking at gmail.com no joke striking at gmail motherfucking.com get at me guys don't be shy peace